Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain-Free Infant Apostasize. Today we've got our first part of a multi-part series on hip flexor muscles and how they affect spondylolisthesis stability and pain in the lower back. Today's first part concerns our psoas muscle and how you can use your psoas to help stabilize your lower back and prevent spondylolisthesis pain with all of your exercises. So the hip flexor muscles, which there are many of, that attach our mid-body to our legs, get a bad rap in spondylolisthesis because many times what we hear about is tight hip flexors and how they pull the pelvis forward and increase the arch of the back, jamming the back portion of our vertebra, our facet joints together, driving the spondylolisthesis vertebra more forward because it increases the arch in the lower back. But today we're going to be talking about an essential part of the hip flexors, one of the muscles known as the iliopsoas or psoas muscle in particular, which runs from our lower back, our spine, it attaches actually to our diaphragm, that large muscle that we breathe with at the base of our rib cage, it's part of our core, to all of our vertebrae and discs except the very bottom disc at L5S1. And the psoas actually attaches to the pelvic floor muscles that are part of our core, the brim of our pelvis, which helps us tuck our tail under, which you know from previous videos is a great thing for most of us with spondylolisthesis, and eventually attaches to the inside of the thigh bone. Now, a long time ago, the psoas was thought to simply be a hip flexor, meaning when it contracted, it bent the leg upwards. But in modern research, we understand that the line of pull really doesn't do much for hip flexion. It's more of a stability muscle. And by that, I mean specifically, it helps to stabilize spondylolisthesis vertebra. When we have a spondylolisthesis, the vertebra has slipped forward. That's known as a shear force, meaning that the vertebra is shearing forward on the one beneath it. It stresses the joints, disc fibers, nerves, other soft tissues in the area that cause pain. One of the basic biomechanical principles of spinal stability is that the best way to prevent shearing or a forward motion on a vertebra, like spondylolisthesis, is with a compression force. If you can compress the spine, you actually help to decrease that ability for the spondylolisthesis to move forward. This is imperative while we're exercising, while we're moving, so as not to aggravate our spondylolisthesis pain. So we're going to talk about how to engage your psoas muscle because when the psoas contracts or shortens or tenses, it produces compression not only in the hip joint by bringing the femur or the thigh bone up into the socket, but it also, because of its attachments at the lumbar or low back vertebra, helps to compress or stabilize the low back, and that's going to help you with your spinal stability if you add it into your RPI. Again, if you don't know what your RPI, reverse posture isometric is, please go to either the posture size or the painfreeandfit.com website, learn what your unique body analysis shows in terms of your muscle asymmetries, in terms of your movement tendencies, whether you have a tendency to have your tail up, one hip hiking up, a tendency to rotate or lean your ribcage down, all these biomechanical factors due to your asymmetrical habits play a role in compressing and stretching the various soft tissues that cause spondylolisthesis pain. So once you know your RPI and you engage it, we're going to now learn how to engage our psoas muscles so we have an extra amount of stability, a compressive tension between the bottom of the psoas and the top that helps to prevent that shearing forward motion of spondylolisthesis vertebra. It's easy to learn this line face up at the beginning. If you lie face up, the first thing you can do is you can practice tilting your tailbone under while your legs are straight. Posterior pelvic tilting is very easy when I have my knees bent because it naturally puts the pelvis into that posterior tilt. It flattens the arch or lordosis of my low back. But when I have my legs down, that same position now becomes much more difficult to attain because the attachments of the other hip flexors to the pelvis now are pulling and stretching, and they're pulling the pelvis into what's known as an anterior pelvic tilt. Many times it's going to aggravate spondylolisthesis pain. So the first thing we can do is from a simple pelvic tilt is to tilt our pubic bone up and our tailbone under. And if you'll see what's happening there, in my low back, I can put my hands under the arch of my back. That's going to flatten the arch out. That uses multiple muscles. It uses our hamstrings, our buttocks, our abdominals, but it also uses part of our psoas muscle to do that. But to really get the psoas contracting so it stabilizes the low back, what we need to do is we need to focus on the leg 
pulling up into the hip socket. And the best way to do this is to lengthen one leg slightly, just by a few millimeters first. I'm pushing my right leg in this instance a little longer than my left. And then I'm going to try to pull it back up into the socket without elevating my whole hip. I don't want my entire pelvis to hip hike or move. So I can hold my hands at the top of my pelvis, my belt line. And I want to make sure after I elongate that leg, as I pull the leg back up into the socket, I don't feel my whole pelvis shifting up. I'm localizing it just to the ball and socket in my hip joint. And I can do that a few times and practice. Many times it'll help to keep the pelvis actually pushing down so it doesn't move up as a counter pressure to that leg bone moving back into the socket. Once I get that in terms of my normal coordination, I can practice that in different areas. I can lay on my side and I can keep my hip bent at a slightly different angle now. Now I'm going to have my hips bent a little bit. I can put a pillow between my knees so I try to keep my top leg level with my spine. And again, practice elongating the leg out of the hip socket. In this case, my knee will be going forward past the other knee. And then again, with my hand on my pelvis so I don't feel my pelvis move, I'm just going to bring that leg slightly back. It's a very slight motion, just a few millimeters of motion that's going to engage that psoas. I can also do this in the standing position. As I stand up, I can, with a good posture of legs straight forward, practice before I squat or perform any standing spondylolisthesis exercise, bending my knees slightly and then tensing my thigh bone back up into my hip socket. When I do this, I can place a hand on my lower back to make sure that there's no motion on my back. This is an isometric psoas contraction, which means that as the leg bone pulls back or sucks up into the socket slightly, there's tension but no net movement. Those are three simple ways to engage your psoas muscles. I'd suggest starting in any position that you'd like and practicing in as many different positions as possible. The psoas is recruited or used a lot when our leg is higher than 90 degrees. One of the psoas' action, remember, is posterior pelvic tilting. So when our knees come up real high, the psoas really engages a lot. So you can even practice at that angle, taking the thigh bone and pulling it back into the socket. Again, you could put one hand behind your buttock or your hip to make sure that your whole pelvis isn't turning with that. But again, you're localizing it just to that hip socket. As the hip compresses, so does the spine. It helps to stabilize and prevent that shear force. It helps to prevent spondylolisthesis pain. Use this psoas contraction with any of your other RPI tensions, with any of the other spondylolisthesis exercises that we present on this channel. If you like this video on spondylolisthesis and psoas recruitment strategies, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos out there on spondylolisthesis. If you're looking for a great program to learn how to stabilize your lower back and protect your spondylolisthesis based on your unique posture tendencies, movement abnormalities, muscle imbalances, core asymmetries, go to the painfreeandfit.com website. We have our fast track spondylo program there that'll teach you all of that and how to build a nice program to help stabilize your spine and get your back into shape and moving fitness without aggravating your lower back. I hope this video on psoas stabilization for spondylolisthesis pain helps you with your chronic lower back.